Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 192 of Category 5 Technology TV. It is great to have you here. It's Tuesday, May the 24th, 2011. Hey, Krista. Time flies. Yeah. How's it going? Good. Good. Yeah, we've had some... some uh, uh, it was a good long weekend, wasn't it? Oh, it felt so long. I was, at, I was so confused today. I thought it was Monday all day. Crazy. I almost didn't show up. Unreal. Okay. They were calling for thunderstorms all weekend, and we ended up having sunshine. I know, it's ridiculous. So like all those that. cottagers must have just been in heaven. There you go. Yeah. I had a barbecue <laughs> every day. Nice to have you here. Uh, you can find us online, www.category5.tv. And uh, I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. And Hillary is uh, here with us as well. And uh, we have this uh, this issue where we have to switch microphones really, really quick. Hillary, Hi. Hey everyone! Happy long weekend, post long weekend in Canada. I don't know. I too was confused. I thought yesterday was Tuesday, and I had my heart set on coming in, and I was wrong. But I'm here today, so I'm glad. But let me tell you, people, I got lots to tell you about the world of news and technology. So coming up in the newsroom, new technology will make fingerprinting much faster for police in Alberta, Canada. In a surprise move that nobody saw coming. Sony shut down the PlayStation Network again today for maintenance. And a single laser has been demonstrated to transfer data at 26 terabits per second. Some people in the UK will be able to buy burgers by simply swiping their mobile phone. And lastly, Unity will be making its way to OpenSUSE after all. So stick around because these stories are coming up in the newsroom in under 30 minutes. Hillary, thanks so much. Uh, and uh, I guess we should we should really quickly off the top talk about why I'm having to, to work like that with Hillary. Hillary is actually here in the studio with us, and uh, if she wants to wave to Backstage Pass just kind of through the middle here, uh, then people who are watching Backstage Pass on our website will be able to see her. Uh, however, we're still in this situation where our, our server was, was zapped and we can't hook up a second microphone and we don't have that capability just yet. I'm very, very pleased to announce that we're, we're extremely close. To being able to get that uh, that new server and and we got a really good um, uh, I guess push forward uh, towards that uh, last uh, last week when uh, when we came across uh, a really good deal uh, a friend of mine was able to to come across something through work so so very excited that uh, very soon we'll be able to implement uh, we'll be able to bring back the uh, the second and third camera and uh, and get things back up and running. But as it is, uh, the irony here is that Hillary is in the studio, but we have to use Skype <laughs> on her laptop. So it's pretty fantastic. <laughs> but uh, other than that, uh, we also have to purchase new microphones, uh, at least two. Uh, this headset that I'm using tonight, I think it sounds pretty great. I think. Uh, Maybe let us know in the chat room what you think at Category5.tv. That's Freenode and the Category5 chat room. Uh, but I, I think it sounds pretty pretty good. And uh, this was uh, actually loaned to us from Music Pro in Barry. I'd encourage you to uh, to show them support. Uh, visit them on Barry View Drive um, just as a way of saying thanks for helping us through this time that we're down two microphones th due to the power surge. Um, I think that these are these are pretty good. But these... Like as far as the sound goes, I think it's great. This is the Apex 575 that they loaned us. The cost of the mic is 140 bucks, and then we have to buy a 30 dollar adapter. Uh, for those of you who aren't sure, I can show you. <laughs> this is how it actually plugs in. So we've got a a little adapter that goes in through XLR, and then the uh, the board powers that. So it's 160, 170 dollars for us to buy one of those mics, and uh, and that's basically afforded by uh, by your donations, which uh, we thank you very much for. Uh, we haven't purchased any yet. We're still using a loaner, uh, but we would ask that uh, if you have the means to do so, if you'd like to show your support for the show and help us work towards that, um, then I would ask you to go to our website and, and consider donating by clicking on Support Us. That would be uh, very much appreciated. And thank you to everybody who has shown their support so far. It's been so encouraging to, to have our community standing by us again 
uh, in our time, I, I would say that this is a time of need. We don't have money in the bank and we don't charge for the service. So uh, when something like a power surge happens that takes out equipment, then it becomes a uh, pretty tough time. So, But we're glad to be able to still continue broadcasting to you. And, uh, and thank you to everyone who has pitched in so far. Tonight, we're going to be awarding a copy of the Wirecast broadcast software. Speaking of companies that are just awesome... Uh, this is the company that uh, develops the software that we use to broadcast Category 5 TV. Uh, so everything that you see, the, the ticker at the bottom there, uh, the, the show itself, uh, all the camera transitions, everything is brought in through Wirecast from Telestream. You can find out more about them at cat5.tv slash Wirecast. And we're going to be giving away a copy of that uh, this evening. Also, I think we're wrapping up our series on web development. Which is exciting. It's... Well, I'm sad. You're excited. I'm sad. I'm excited because we've basically accomplished an entire website over the course of, what is it, um, 11 or 12 weeks now. I think this is our 12th week. Um, So I think that's Mm -hmm. pretty exciting. It wouldn't normally take 12 weeks to build a simple website. website Or the homepage for that When we're doing it one, (laughs) like 30 minutes at a time, basically, then that's that's a different story. Rick Stamian says, does that mean Krista's going to be leaving us? I don't know. Tune in next week. Tune in next week to find out. Will she be here? I don't know, but let's just say there is a Krista Wells bio on our website, category5.tv. Don't know why she would do that. If you'd like to learn more about her, go over to our website, category5.tv. I learned some things about you. I am just fascinated. You're like a superstar gymnast. I was a superstar gymnast. Okay, all right. It's all in her bio. Hmm. And Hillary, your bio is uh, up on our website as well. Learn all about the crew here at Category 5. <laughs> She's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Doesn't know if we're... There, there she is. Okay. Uh, so tonight on our, uh, on our series for web development, we're going to be talking about search engine optimization and submission, Woo-hoo. which is kind of like the final thing that we want to be able to do to our website to get it in there. Uh, besides getting it actually hosted and things. And we'll talk about that a little later on in the show. And I'd like you to think about kind of some of the things that you've learned over the course of this series um, so that you can share with the viewers as well mm-hmm. uh, what, what you've taken away from the series as well. Absolutely. We have a very cool feature on our website at category5.tv. Everybody head on over there. See how I do that? Category5.tv. <laughs> For one thing, you'll notice uh, one of the cool features that we're launching tonight is uh, high-res imagery. So right on our website, there's a shot that's taken right here. uh, And that is thanks to uh, camera setup that uh, that I've been able to create using a Rebel, Canon Rebel, EOS XSI. Very cool. Um, Anyways, on our website, if you go to About Us, and oh let's see there it is viewer location map and that is going to take you to an actual live view of where our viewers are located so let's just uh let's just say a couple of greets here this is uh <laughs> kind of the the northern american continent so let's let's see down here in mexico i'm going to just kind of zoom in here oh. This is also available in our app, uh, which is mobile, mobile.cat5.tv, and it is multi-touch compatible. So let's see if we can find somebody down here. As about <laughs> a whole bunch of people <laughs> hit the website all at once and destroy our servers. This is pretty neat, though. It's, uh, it actually shows in real time, and you'll f- find that if you watch it, it's going to jump around the screen because every time somebody hits, uh, every time somebody starts viewing our, our show, uh, it will put a pin on the, uh, on the screen. Let's see here. My hands get confused between the two different types of zoom, and I think I broke it. Here we go. Blame it on Robbie. Yeah, blame it on me. Hmm. Go to our website, category5.tv, and <laughs> click on About Us, and you'll see the viewer location map, which I think is just a fantastic feature, and it does show pins for where all of our viewers are located. 
You could probably bring it up on your Mac a little. And I would probably go super thing. fast. It would probably go super fast, yeah. <laughs> but like I say, it is a, it's also in our uh, app on uh, mobile.cat5.tv. And uh, if you go to About Us, you'll see that. Here we go. Robbie always has too many things running. <laughs> okay, so there is our basic viewership at the moment. Um, all over the world. We're pretty much represented on a, every con well every continent. It's pretty awesome to see how many people are actually checking out Category 5. There are some places that... Uh, that I noticed that we do have some viewers, uh, but that have not shown up on the map yet. Um, so I'd encourage you if you you know if you don't always go to our website. I know, for example, that we do have viewers in Kenya. I'd love to see your pins uh, showing up on our map. Um, so let's just say hi to viewers who are joining us from Saudi Arabia, Nigeria. Where else have we got? Wow. Got the Russian Federation, Suomi, Finland. Nice to have you joining us tonight. And yeah, let's see, a couple more. We've got uh, viewers joining us from Minneapolis. Uh, we've got viewers in Washington, D.C. Welcome. Edmonton, Alberta. Lethbridge, Alberta. Nice to have you joining us tonight. And that's just to name a few. So check it out. I think that's uh, that's pretty neat. Cool. Yeah. I think that's cool. I'll close it before I crash, crash everything. everything. <laughs> I know, because it's like everybody hits it all at once and boom. Chug, chug, chug. Yeah. yeah. There it goes. All right. So viewer points for this week. We've got some pictures that have been submitted. Uh, I'm going to try this. Yan Olav who joins us from, uh, let's see, I don't have it in front of me, but I will find it. <laughs> Norway, who uh, has submitted a viewer testimonial by way of video, which I think is very cool, uh, and shows that uh, there is his TV system that he watches Category 5 TV on. And uh, that's very, very cool. You can check out the viewer testimonial that, uh, that he submitted on our website, Category5.tv, under Interact. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of points for this guy, so we're going to, uh, let's look at this. We've got a cardigan, 100 wow. points. I mean, he's really thought this through. This is, this is sneaky, sneaky. Okay, so we've got 100 points for the cardigan. I'm going to make a note here. 100 points. <laughs> we've got uh, a TV, which he says he watches Category 5 on. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull back on that one and just say what I want to see is I want to see a picture of you actually watching Category 5 up on that screen. So actually bring up the show. Uh, no cheating. And uh, and I'll give you some points for that. Uh, but in the meantime, because you did submit this by way of a viewer testimonial, I'm going to give you another 100 points because I want to encourage uh, viewers to submit their viewer testimonials. So, so far, you've got 200 points for this, this evening. And I'll give you some more points if you can take a picture, just a still shot, or if you want it to be another video. Uh, of the TV playing some Category 5. That would be awesome. Okay, so thank you for submitting that. And again, a viewer testimonial submitted by video on our website. Now, we've also got this one here, which uh, is actually a shot from Joe. And uh, this is a view of Category 5 being viewed on, uh, on his mobile device, which is very cool. Looks good. Looks like it displays quite nicely. Yeah, we show up well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll give you 100 points for that. Point happy. I guess. This one comes to us from Jot, who has an Antec, Antec Fusion remote chassis for his uh, home theater PC. And uh, while, the, while the picture is not the clearest, uh, you can see that, uh, that there he is watching us up on the screen. And uh, he's got this really nice home theater system here. And... Uh, Watching us up on the sh on the screen, so Jot, I will uh, I'll give you 100 points for that. Moving along, I've got one here uh, from Raptor222 has, who has submitted a cardigan shot, and uh, oh, 
There we Why does it do that? There we go. <laughs> Raptor 222, congratulations. I'm going to award you with 100 points for that. And, uh, and really encourage people to send in their shots of them watching the show. Uh, this one here comes to us from Tordo, <laughs> who's watching Category 5 on his device. There he is. And you've inspired a generation there, Krista. I see that. Yeah. It'll be kids, kids walking down the street. Yeah. yeah. And they'll be like, yeah, yeah Krista. Doing, doing the Krista. Doing the Krista. It's crazy kids. Fantastic. Do we have any more? That is it. That's all that's been submitted for this week. Now, there were a couple that were submitted that uh, that had had shown us the devices that they used to watch the show, but I really want to see the show actually displayed on that device. So make sure you send that in to us live at category5.tv for a, uh, a fun way for you to get some free viewer points. Uh, and uh, we'll watch for those this week and see if we can get you in at the end of the, uh, well, next week. Cool. Groove, eh? Viewer cool. questions. Oh, well, we have lots today. <laughs> it's like a sprint to get through all the uh, the <laughs> initial stuff off the bat. And breathe. Breathe. Take a sip. Ubuntu right. for the wind. <laughs> I don't see a Mac mug here anywhere. Just saying, I'll bring my own next time. Oh, I dropped it while I was coming down the stairs with your water there, Krista. Sorry about that. Oh, you're not sorry. I dropped it. I've got like this raging look on my face. I like, smash it. Not that I would do such a thing. No. I wouldn't do Ever. No. No. I should make a quick mention before, uh, as you're bringing up the questions, mm-hmm. that uh, we may have some, uh, some things to give away mm. in, the, uh, in the chat room. So okay. if you're watching this and you're not currently in the chat room, make sure you join us, category5.tv, and join the chat. I wonder him, him. what that could be. I don't know. I don't know. All there right. Is. Take it away. All right. So first email from Sean, <laughs> a.k.a. Hey, Sean. Raptor222. Ah. He says, hi, Robbie. Just hey. caught up with all the shows, schoolwork, etc. I wanted to ask how I can turn a color image into a black and white one in GIMP without using desaturate. Oh. I want to adjust the black and white image to give it more contrast or to give it a more contrasty look and then combine it with the color image. Love the show. Cool. All right, so let's uh, let's grab this super awesome picture that I happen to have here, and I'm going to open it up in the GIMP. This is this is going to be like a quick tutorial kind of question. Okay, so we want to convert this to black and white without using desaturate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy visible, okay, edit, copy visible, or Control A, edit copy visible. I think it got it in my clipboard, anyways, and then edit. Paste as new image. So now I have two copies of that same image. The reason that I want to do that is because you're saying that you don't want to use desaturation. You want to overlay this over top of the color image. So we don't want to lose the color on one of the images. We want to be able to overlay. So I've got two color copies. Okay, I'll close down that one in the background. And I'm going to right click. I'm going to go image mode grayscale. So now one of those images is black and white. One of them is color. So now back at the black and white one, I'm going to highlight all and copy and then paste. Oh, and you'll see that uh, that has created a floating selection layer. So what I need to do is I need to convert that over to a real layer. So I'm going to go layer by right clicking new layer. And you'll see that that floating layer has now become a black and white layer. So now you can do the normal stuff like uh, filters, blur, Gaussian blur on our black and white layer. Give it a, a bit of a brush. Right? Eight pixels, say. If this is what you want to do. Change the layer mode to whatever whatever effect it is that you're going for there, man. But uh, you'll be able to do whatever you like with that. So cool. Play around and go through the settings. And change that to 65%. It's kind of part color, part black and white. <laughs> there you have it. Hope that's what you're looking for. Thanks for the question. Very cool. Next question from Richard Zabata Marsh. Hey, Richard. He says, Hey, Robbie, I'm currently running Windows 7 due to gaming, but I really miss my Linux. Linux? Linux. Sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Mac. <laughs> um, Linux install. I only have 120 gigabytes solid state drive. Uh, as my main hard drive, so I don't really want to dual boot this with Ubuntu. I also have two 320 gigabyte hard drives installed, and I want to know 
how I install Ubuntu on to one of these, but I but still sorry, this is too small. But still be <laughs> to have Grub Screen Bootloader <laughs> to right. choose which to boot from. Thanks in advance and still loving the web dev section. He also says make sure to bribe Krista with cookies to keep her on the show after it ends. <laughs> you know, I was considering staying around anyways, but now that I see this, I think I require the cookies. It's funny that you should say that. <laughs> Conveniently keeps them there. <laughs> Like a cookie? Oh my goodness! Would you guys Hillary, like, a would you like a cookie? Yes. Do you want me to go? Yeah, come get a cookie. <laughs> now you you take a bite of that because that's so, like that's like a magic potion or something world? that uh, now mm. you, you, you can't possibly leave. I have We've to. We've got stay. it locked in, people. I have to. Thanks for the email. <laughs> would you like a cookie? There's plenty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Plenty to go around. Although I was looking at that viewer map a little earlier. I don't think we have enough cookies. Oh, I'll have to go buy more. <laughs> that is sheer bliss, people. Sheer bliss. So now to the actual question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've got 120 gigabyte solid state hard drive in your computer. You want to uh, take that and uh, you want to put Ubuntu on, but you don't have enough space to really do it on that hard drive. You want to use one of your separate hard drives in order to do that. So first of all, back up, back up, back up. That is imperative. Uh, always have a backup. In your case, I think the easiest thing to do would be to grab a tool like Clonezilla, uh, which is free to download. I'll, I'll post the links in the show notes for episode number 192, clonezilla.org. And when you're there, uh, you can get that tool, boot it up from the CD, and create a clone image of your Windows 7 uh, device. That way, uh, because it's an actual image, which means it's an exact duplicate uh, a file that's created to be a duplicate of your computer itself, that Windows 7 partition. If you break it, you can just restore back and you're good to go. But always have a backup, but the Clonezilla image is going to uh, create a really easy mechanism for you to go back in time, basically undo everything that you do. So in order to then, once you've got your backup, because that's the first and foremost thing that I'm going to suggest that you always have when you're going to be doing anything with your bootloader or anything like that, uh, and just have a backup anyways, regardless of anything, is simply boot up from your Ubuntu disk, uh, the live CD, tell it to install to one of those 320 gig uh, hard drives, and once you're going through the installation process, it may ask, because you've got multiple drives, but it may not, um, it usually will put the bootloader on the first boot device. So, um, But what you want to do is you want to make sure that it, during the installation procedure it does put that bootloader on your on your main hard drive, which is your Windows drive. That's your boot drive. So then when you boot up your computer, it's going to ask you, do you want Windows 7 or do you want Ubuntu? And you'll be able to do a boot, but it's going to be loading from a different hard drive depending on which operating system you select. So, uh, And then when you're in Linux, you can uh, mount that NTFS drive from uh, for Windows 7. You'll be able to access your Windows files um, like your Windows partitions files from within Ubuntu. So I hope that that uh, helps steer you in the right direction. Great. Cool. I think I got your pen too. There oh, you are thiefing it. I know. I just love Pogo Plug <laughs> stuff. I got the shirt. I got the pen. It's everywhere. I got the Pogo Plug. <laughs> I just might have a couple to give away. Oh, yeah. maybe. maybe. Oh, did I say that out loud? Oh. Get in the chat room. <laughs> All right. You got another question for Next me. Next question tell. from Greg. Hey, Greg. He says, hi, Robbie. Could you do a tutorial on how to set up GNOME 3 in Ubuntu? Uh, what version of Ubuntu? That would be the real question. Uh, and I would say um, that I would probably steer away from that. And the reason being is that I try to keep things fairly simple, but at the same time, I try to make sure that what we show on the show is not really, it doesn't have a high potential to break your system. With 11.04, it's possible to get GNOME 3 running, um, but it can be it can damage your your Ubuntu install. So not something that we'd really want to go over on the show, um, unless you break it. Then maybe we'll try to help you fix it. But there are tons of tutorials out there, um, and and give that a try. Um, but I, I would probably steer away from that on our show. But thanks for the question, anyways. And we just don't want to step into stuff where. Because uh, a novice user would say, oh, well, I, I heard it on Category 5, here's how I do it. And then something uh, anomalous uh, causes their system to break. So I want to be careful mm. of that. Good. Next question from Joe. He 
says, I have Thank a you. donation idea for the series of web design classes you and Chris have All been right. doing. Why not make CDs or a DVD of the series and ask for $10 or more donation and give them the series as a gift? Just working the brain cells mm. always to get you guys funds for the show. Yeah, Thanks, cheers. Joe. I've had the idea to make a DVD set of the uh, the web development series, and that's part of why we've done such a consistent um, multi-part series is because mm -hmm. then it gives us something that is uh, marketable and something that we can we can offer that's that's value added because on our website because we give everything away for free there's not a lot of value added stuff that we can say you know if you if you donate we can give you this we we use the viewer points a lot uh, and progressively so uh, more and more but mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to have something that we could send you like a DVD um, so I have actually talked to unfortunately Cafe Press won't do it for us. I've talked to some some printing presses and stuff, and unfortunately they do require that we buy a certain amount. So that's where Cafe Press would have been perfect, but they won't do it. So, so oh, you know, hopefully we'll find somebody who can print them for us. And in the meantime, would you be interested in an ISO download or something like that? Is that worth your while? Uh, something that you could burn yourself, or do you prefer to actually get a DVD set that you can just basically have shipped to you in the mail? I'd be interested to know. But thank you for the suggestion. I I like that idea. Yeah, it sounds really great. We've got uh, just a couple minutes left uh, until the news, and uh, if we have any more Let's questions some, that have come in there. Some speed questions. Okay, so from Joe, a.k.a. Joe Cool. Hey, Joe Cool. Uh, this is just kind of a question for everyone, I think. He says, how many folks out there like the new interface for Ubuntu? Well, I'm no Robbie Cool. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as, as Robbie, I... Uh, <laughs> I've forced myself to use Unity. Unity is like the new 11.04 interface. You can get around it, as you as you noticed. Uh, we showed you how to do that in a previous episode. You can use GNOME. Um, I, I kind of thought, you know what, I'm best just to install it, run it, and use it. At first, I absolutely did not like it at all. Mm -hmm. Get your feedback in the chat room, category5.tv, or post your comments in the comments section of the show notes of this episode, number 192 at category5.tv. For me, at first, it was too... Uh, Unity is designed, to me, to be used by a touchscreen device. It really feels like you want to have a tablet in order to use this. The whole interface, the way that it works, is like to touch with you know, one finger to be able to hit uh, an icon and have it spew out what, what it is that you, you want it to do. It really doesn't feel like a desktop desktop to me, like a desktop interface. It feels really like a, a multi-touch screen. Um, so that's the unfortunate thing. I don't really like that end of it because I don't have a touch screen. And if I did, I wouldn't be using it in business uh, because, you know, like you're mm -hmm. not going to be doing graphic editing like this, you know, on a screen. It's just not no. practical. So as a mouse user and uh, for you, a, a tablet, tablet user, and, and I'm going to be using a trackball for, you know, to help with my ergonomics, it's just not, it's not a good interface. But that said, because I'm forcing myself to use it, I'm getting used to it to the point where it's usable. I've set it up the way that I would want it set up, and, and it's working. But I still prefer GNOME, I have to say. Yeah. Just straight GNOME. GNOME 2. That's my opinion. But post your comments in the chat room, and again in the, in the comments section for this episode 192. 192. Hillary, I'm going to uh, I'm going to pass things off to you in uh, just a moment as I switch the uh, the cameras over, and uh, we will uh, be taking care of uh, search engine optimization and submission when we return. Hey everyone, it's time for the newsroom. Da 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 da! I know you've all been eagerly awaiting to hear the following. Police in Calgary and Edmonton are getting a clearer picture of the prints criminals leave behind thanks to some new technology. MorphBiz allows the police to get a higher definition image of fingerprints using the most advanced biometrics technology available today. It will allow investigators, investigators to search fingerprint databases faster. A search that previously would have taken between 8 to 12 minutes can now be performed in two minutes. The technology will also eventually allow police to scan fingerprints electronically and eliminate the ink and paper process. If you have tried to sign a PlayStation Network on your PS3 or PSP today, you may have had no luck, as Sony took parts of the network down for maintenance, offering a down window from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time. No, no, it wasn't a hack attack, it was maintenance. In other news, the sky is blue, water is wet, and oh yeah, 
Fishing Network down. Researchers have set a new record for the rate of data transfer using a single laser. You may have heard about 100 terabit per second experiment recently, but according to Wolfgang Freud, Wolfgang Freud, a co-author of the current paper from the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology in Germany, this demonstration required 370 lasers, lasers, which is an incredibly expensive thing. If you can imagine 370 lasers, they fill racks and consume several kilowatts of power. A new record has been set with just one laser, 26 terabytes per second. At those speeds, the contents of nearly 1,000 high-definition DVDs could be transferred in about one second. The technology could be used in anything from data transfer to silicon chips and is a good candidate for commercial use. The first ever service that allows users to pay for purchases via their mobile phone has been launched in the UK. Among shops picked up for the system are McDonald's, Eat, EAT, Credit Manager, and some stores. Users wish to use the system to quick tap will need orange and Barclay card accounts, as well as a handset set up to contact this payment. The service is made possible by Near Field Communication, NF, the short-range wireless technology that underpins many wireless payment systems. The user taps the mobile phone to a payment scanner rather than having to carry credit card or debit cards or cash. For now, QuickTap require an NFC-enabled Samsung Topo Lite and handset, which also goes on sale this Friday. And for a while, there, it wasn't looking too hopeful, but Nelson Mark, the OpenSUSE contributor who has been working on porting Unity to OpenSUSE, announced on Thursday that Unity 2D packages will indeed be available soon. While Unity 3D is still on Mark's to-do list, Unity 2D is planned for inclusion on the GNOME Ayatana, GNOME Ayatana repository in the OpenSUSE build service very soon. An ETA has yet to be announced, though. For the adventurous, one-click installers will also be made available. Ooh, cool. You can get these full stories online at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from our fabulous community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. For the category 5 TV. Mm, Category 5.tv newsroom. I'm Hillary. Thanks, Hill. <laughs> <laughs> and what were you laughing about there? You're just making a crumbly mess. You oh, can't it's because I, I was trying to eat my cookie over the news. Trying and to then do it it quietly, just like... and it's like crumbling all over the desk. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Hillary. Uh, this episode of Category 5 TV is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug, Category uh, Cat 5.tv slash Pogo Plug, and Planet Calypso. Join us uh, in the free massive multiplayer online game cat5.tv slash calypso. Are you ready to do some search engine optimization? I am so ready. It's Sweet. ridiculous. Let's do the search engine optimization. Now, what is that? Well, once you've got a website, you've got to basically get it ready for the search engine so that you get better results than if you didn't do search engine optimization. And then we're going to get into search engine submission. You've heard of search engine optimization, no doubt, but how do the search engines know that mm -hmm. your site even exists? That's where submission comes in. So you've got to actually tell the search engines, hey, I'm over here. Uh, come spider my website. And uh, that's when things start to get uh, exciting. If you've got the optimization in place, then all of a sudden you're able to uh, start working with uh, with your website in the search engine. You'll see your, your site start to populate the search engines. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up demo.cat5.tv slash zero one zero that's where we're gonna put the files for tonight and they are there okay so this is where things get a little bit interesting because now we actually have a working website mm -hmm. right our site is actually technically a, a functional website even though we're just using lorem ipsum text and things like that at the moment but you remember that we used uh, PHP includes in order to uh, in order to get um, in order to get everything kind of included from separate files. And one of the other things that you'll notice, if, if I just bring up index.php, here we are. And for the little little fixes here and there, uh, just for those of you in the chat room, the little things that, uh, that need to be done, we'll actually be doing those off the air and providing you with the files. 
Uh, so, in includes slash header, which is shared among all of our pages, you'll see that I've already included in our demo mockup this dollar sign title, dollar sign keywords, and dollar sign description, because I'm a firm believer in planning ahead when it comes to our web development uh, and actually having things in place so that I don't have to go back and redo that, even though it wouldn't be a lot of work, I, I do plan it ahead. So that said, what I'm going to do is in my header.php, I'm going to do what's called a nested include, which is not something that I traditionally do. Usually I plan things out in such a way that, um, that it will, um, everything is already planned out. In this case, because I'd like to show you how this works, uh, I'm going to actually do it. So, and what I mean by that is normally I would have all my includes in the file in this kind of manner. But here we're including header.php, and I don't want to have to go through every file and go include and add another include to that list. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my header.php, and I'm going to go include includes seo.php. Again, I use friendly names, and so SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. I'm going to save that file, and then I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to call this, first of all, I'm just going to open and close PHP, and then I'm going to save it and call it in my includes folder seo.php. Because if I didn't create it, even though it doesn't actually do anything yet, if I hadn't created it, it's going to cause a syntax error, uh, uh, failed to include this file because it doesn't exist. So now that it's created, we're good to go. So we know that we need dollar sign title. We know that we need dollar sign keywords. And we know that we need dollar sign description. Okay? And those are all going to be called in header.php. Okay? So in our seo.php, let's first of all start up by creating generic, uh, these are our defaults. So if they're not going to be overridden, this is what uh, this is what is it's going to be. And I'll show you why that is. Demo.cat5.tv slash 010. So Aspire Place, that's the name of our website. We need to think in terms of search engines. Aspire Place. What do they do? They make things we awesome. make things awesome. Now you would use very keyword rich text there and and you want your title to be short and sweet that's going to appear in the title uh, in the title bar of your website so uh, you want it to be nice and clean and you don't want it to be overbearing keywords this is uh, this is where we need to understand how the search engines work as far as you know everybody knows what a keyword is but everybody thinks or, or people who are maybe who, who don't quite know how they work you think that you want to throw in every single word that has to do with your product. The problem with that is that keyword saturation changes with every keyword that you add to your site. A couple of things that you need to observe when you're working with keywords. First of all, what text is on my site? In my case, it's a bunch of lorem ipsum, but it might be about my products. It might be about the services that I provide. Duplicating the same words within this Okay, comma separated. Duplicating those words means that their keyword saturation is now increased because I've got keywords that match the text on my website. So in that regard, if I sell boats, I may have text on my website that has to do with boats and it has to do with uh, different types of boat trailers. And so I'm infusing the word boat and boat sales into my site. So I infuse that into the content of my site, but then I use keywords that also infuse those and say to, to the search engines, hey, here's, here's what I say the, the site's about. Here are my keywords. These are the most important things about my site. And then the search engine says, okay, well, you tell me that it's about boats, but what does the text of your site say? So then it looks at the text of your site because they're intelligent these days. And it says, oh, yeah, this site is about boats, so let's increase the rate, uh, the ranking of that site. If you told it that it's all about boats, but it's about something completely different, it's going to know that and it's going to actually uh, lose standings because you don't have keyword saturation. So looking at that, my keywords are comma separated values, maximum 25 keywords. Don't go over that limit. If you want to have multiple words, so for example, Barry Ontario, 
will provide a better result for Barry Ontario searches than would Barry Ontario with commas because this is the exact search. Notice that I'm doing everything lowercase because some search engines will make your search case sensitive if you add uppercase characters. It's not so much the case anymore. Google has really set the trends as far as how the search engines work. But traditionally, if I had Lorem with a capital L, then I'm going to get good results for people who are searching for Lorem with a capital L, but not so much for those with lower L. If I have all lowercase characters, the search engine says this is not case sensitive, so it will give me results for everything that has to do with Lorem. Also, looking at your keywords, like I say, keeping it below 25, but we don't want to go any, like that's, that's ridiculous to actually hit that. Again, think about keyword saturation, so understanding the concepts behind it. If I have three keywords, the search engines interpret those keywords as being very important. If I have 10 keywords, they're less important because there's so many of them. Right? So if I've got 10 keywords, each keyword, say, is worth 10% of my keyword saturation. If I have five keywords, and each of those is now worth 20%, and so on. So, and that's just to put it into real lame, like lay speak. But the fewer keywords that you have that are really um, focused on your content and on what it is that you're actually selling and doing, uh, the, the higher the results for those particular keywords. The more keywords you have, the less the keyword saturation for those words, and so therefore you're not going to get the same results necessarily for those keywords. Description is a topic that some will say you don't need, and then others will say, like myself, yeah, it's best to have it anyways. Usually your description doesn't duplicate the title of your site because they're usually displayed side by side and you don't want to be marked as a spammer to the search engines. The reason that I say, now the, the description can be a little bit longer, but you don't want it to be too long. Imagine that this is the subtext of a, of a search response. So you've got the title of the site and then the subtext below it, a couple lines at the very, very most. The reason that I would use the description of some of the, uh, the directory services, not so much the search engines like Google, but the directory services like DMOZ uh, will tap into things like the description of your website. And even if they don't, like Yahoo uh, may take that description information and just use it for further keyword saturation and say, well, you said it's about boats and you talk about boats in your description and it has boats in your title and it has boats on your website and you've got a couple of boat related keywords so this site is about boats so when someone's searching about uh, searching the web uh, for boats all of a sudden I've got much better standings than the guy who only has you know who doesn't have the proper keywords okay so that if I upload it I'm gonna upload my includes slash SEO and my includes slash header.php both of them are .php of course I'm just throwing that onto the server. So now, if I refresh, you'll see that my title is Aspire Place. We make things awesome. Okay, That's the only thing that we see, but if we view the source, you'll see keywords are there based on my file, and description is there based on my file. That is because we created these strings. These are PHP strings, title, keywords, description. And in our demo document, those things are echoed out like this. Okay, question mark equals in PHP means echo. It's a quick way of saying PHP echo dollar sign title semicolon close. It's the same thing. Okay. So with that done, now we have a default. So nothing can happen to cause our site to not have a title and a keyword in the description. But we might say, okay, if stri str so string search within a string in case sensitive. The I means it's in case sensitive. If we remove that, it's case sensitive. So we're going to do a search within a string. So we're going to search for um, index.php. And we're going to get that from our server uh, request URI is most likely where it's going to be found. I'm going to run a test. I'm just going to exit at that. And if it works, it will say success. 
and then I'll explain to, to you what it is that we're doing there. And if it doesn't work, we'll see why. Okay. Refresh my site. I didn't get success, so my search is not correct. I think it's haystack slash comma needle. Pardon me. <laughs> We're always looking for a needle in a haystack. I think uh, STRI, STR is haystack and then the needle. Uh, let's see. STRI, STR. Bad bracket. There we go. I'll show you all this uh, once I've got it there just to give you the real time. Okay, so we're still not getting an exit. Success, index.p. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm going to go, this is a very simple thing, never do this on a live site or in a, in a file that is not you know that's visible to the public. I'm just going to run PHP info, and I just want to find out what we're trying to. Do, what we want to do is we want to search within the server um, array, which your server outputs through PHP, and find out uh, the location. Uh, I've got a underscore. Sorry, pull out the underscore. We want to find the location of that file and say, okay, if it's the index.php. We're going to use these titles if it's the about.php. So this is the output of PHP version 5.2.17 on my server. That's what you're going to see. So let's see. We're going to do a search for index.php. It's script file name. See, I was using uh, script URI. So under script file name, okay, that's what we want because that is showing us index.php, okay? So back at our code, I'll just undo. So I'm going to search, I believe it's still haystack, which is what we're searching in and what we're searching for, but we want to change that to, what did I say it was? Script file name. And this may be different for your server. It depends on your configuration of PHP. So that's why I wanted to show you running PHP info. You notice it's exited with success. Okay, it's all part of the troubleshooting process. So you think there for a moment. Oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> it's all part of the process of getting your website working, and that's how you're going to do it. And that's why I want you to see all this. If we pre-planned everything, it's not realistic, and it's not going to help you if you run into that problem. Okay, so what we've done here is so we've said if. Okay, now we're going to within our if statement, we're going to say we're going to search case insensitive within dollar sign server script file name so we know that that contains the entire path and the file name of our current script the running script which is index.php so here's what we want to search for so we've got a comma and then in apostrophes index.php that's the file that we are searching for so if that happens then we exit with success but now what we're going to actually do is we're going to go nah we're going to override title equals this is index okay so now you've got our default title right there. But then if the file that we're actually on is index.php, then let's replace title with this is index. So now if I save that, upload seo.php, look at our site. Let's click on refresh. This is index up at the top. If I click on about us, aspire place. We make things awesome because that does not have an override, but my index does. Okay, So this is how now, using scripting, we're going to actually create a dynamic method of creating title, keyword, and description for each individual page. Right? So now we go Aspire Place. That looks great. That's perfect for home. Right? But now let's, uh, let's clean this up just a little bit. Use your indentations, make it clean. Okay. Now 
Now we're going to, of course, you're going to go through and strategically place keywords throughout your site and also change the description th to be relevant to your site. Okay. So we've said if the file name contains case insensitive index.php, use this title keyword description. Else if, so eh, if not, and also check if this is about us. Dot PHP, and then we're going to call it about our awesome team. So what happens is, is if it's index.php, because this is an else if, it's going to stop processing here. So it's not going to keep going through the through the scan if it found if it found something. So I'm going to save that, upload my file, and remember these files are all available for download, and it's free. Cat5.tv/webdev, and you'll be able to get these files uh, so that you can tinker with these yourself. Home, Aspire Place, we make things awesome about us aspire place about our awesome team right so now we've created this search engine optimization that is one easy to update right two what have we accomplished here based on what we learned last week we've taken all that stuff all that search engine optimization and we've placed it in one file so if we want to re-optimize our site if we want to change titles and keywords and descriptions it's one file. We don't have to open up 300 different files at the end of the day. And if we create new files, those new files are going to automatically get the default keywords because they're not going to get an override. Basically, an override says, you know, even regardless of whether the title is already set, change it to this. And that's going to make it happen for you. So that's search engine optimization. As far as submission goes, as I mentioned earlier on in the show, and that's really, really basic. I mean, delve into search engine optimization. That's just to get your site to the place that it needs to be for, for your search engines. A lot of the stuff is already done for you. Cat5.tv slash webdev, you'll see a blank index.php that you can download for free. And with that file, you'll see that a lot of the stuff like, uh, you know, your distribution global, content languages, uh, English, US. You might want to change that if you're creating a non-English website. Content uh, character type the type of uh, object for certain search engines and, and directories. This is a document. Uh, the rating, so that it's not, you know, this is not a PG site, for example. Robots, all, means that the, all of the uh, search engines are allowed to crawl through your content and index it, uh, i.e. fix for pings. Uh, so all that stuff is already in place for you if you use our source material. I, I would suggest, pardon me, that you learn how it works and go over that and, and see how you can you can actually create search engine optimization for your own site, but a lot of that is in place, so it's you know it's readily available for you. Cat5.tv/webdev. A cool uh, a cool site that you can go to. Just to give a little bit of a plug to old friends of mine uh, who have been doing this for for me and my company for for years upon years. Adpro.com. If you head on over there, you'll see that they offer. Uh, if you go into submission plans. You can, you can actually purchase a commercial submission package. Or on the home page, you'll see free website URL submission to search engines, which as a startup, as somebody who's just you know getting your website going for the first time, this is something that's going to get you started. So you click on basic free index. You enter your email and your website address and say OK and submit. And what they do, they've created a fantastic script that goes through your site, crawls the site, indexes it, submits it to a whole bunch of search engines. Might be like 50 search engines at that rate. So gets into Google and things like that. Make sure your site's ready for it before you do that. Make sure that it's reliable and it's up because if your site is down, if it's inconsistent, if it's not quite working, or if it's not search engine optimized, Google will look at it and say, yeah, it's not good enough for our, for our search engine. So you want to make sure it's, it's ready for them. That's where the optimization comes in. And then do the submission. And adpro.com is a great place to start. There are tons of uh, commercial um, uh, companies that do search engine optimization and submission. It's worth your while if you're doing this commercially, uh, but I'm just showing you as a, as a friend and somebody who wants to help you get started. Uh, and this is really just the bare, you know, bare essentials, get you going, get you started. And I think uh, that'll give you a good, uh, good little leap on website development. Get your web hosting as well uh, for only $70 for the entire year. Includes a free domain name registration, cat5.tv slash webdev for the details and that uh, that will be available for you uh, for forever <laughs> forever and ever cool 
So that uh, that concludes our web development series. Do you think we've covered a lot? Yeah, I do. It's been a lot, eh? I'm so sad, though. Yeah. It's done. It's over. The site is, like, ready. I mean, we can populate it with content. Feel free to, <laughs> you know, put it together and host it and show us what you've come up with uh, with the code that you've downloaded from cat5.tv slash webdev. We'd love to see. And, uh, yeah, I think that's been a lot mm -hmm. of fun. Great. So what's next? We got lots of stuff to give away. <gasps> no way. We do. Awesome. Wirecast. Head on over to cat5.tv slash win. We have received a bunch of votes there. And here's what I'm going to do. This is how we're going to make it fair. Okay? For every vote that you've received to win a free copy of Wirecast, which is the broadcast suite that we use to broadcast Category 5 TV, I've written down your number here. So you see there's one, two... Three, five, six. Mm -hmm. So these are these are the actual entries. So if you go to cat5.tv slash win, I've written out an entry like a number for each time that you've been voted for. So it's gonna be whoever gets two. I'm just cutting this up. You can see that I'm doing <laughs> this. It's like it's live. Yeah, it's actually happening right now. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So I've got uh, now number two is like I said, winning by a landslide. Entry number two. We'll see what happens. Cat5.tv slash win. And you get to see who it is that's going to win there. So we're going to shake these up and we're going to draw two. Well, we're going to draw until somebody gets two. So if I say, if we if we draw out number two, we still have to draw another one until number t uh, whoever so gets. So suspenseful. Yeah. You got you to gotta, you gotta get two. All right. So it's whoever is first to get two. Thank you for your votes. Cat5.tv slash win. Got all the... Can you hear that? Oh, I'm dropping You're one. You're dropping people. There we go. I just dropped one. Robbie patented I know. This draw is case. Like my glasses case. <laughs> here you go. Okay. I won't even dun, look. Dun, 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 dun. Here. Okay, go for it. Take one out. Just one. What's the number? I don't know. Uh, five. Five. Okay. Draw another one. <laughs> Let's see if we get a five. If it's a five, number five gets it. It's a three. It's a three. Okay. So set those aside. We've got a five and a three. <laughs> and another five. Another five. So the winner <laughs> of Wirecast Broadcast Suite is entry number five. Let's see cool. what uh, let's see what they said. Cat five dot TV slash win. Congratulations. And uh, entry number five comes to us from Anthony Fear. Congratulations, Anthony, who says I would love to receive a copy of Wirecast because it is quite simply the best live streaming software available in the market. I know because I've spent that last few weeks trying out all the alternatives and nothing comes even close. My colleague and I have many ex uh, years of experience in providing technical support to Windows users and we wanted to share some of that experience and information with our fellow PC users. So we've decided to start a regular podcast offering support and advice to home computer users. Well, it sounds like a Sounds like a great thing to do. <laughs> Might be a little Fantastic biased. Fantastic <laughs> thing to do. Yeah, we are completely biased. You can read the entire entry number five at cat5.tv slash win. And it sounds like we've got some new competition coming up for Category hmm. 5. They're going to start their own show. They're going to do a lot of the same things that we do. I wonder if they have cookies. Do you have cookies? Because if this not, time. we are so... We're just way we're above... so ahead of you. Way so above. Because we got cookies. <laughs> Vote for your favorite episodes of Category 5 TV uh, at Category 5, <coughs> pardon me, dot TV. And when you vote with the five-star system, it will actually be incorporated into our viewer top 10, which was added to the site this week. And you can actually get that list from our website. It is live. So as you vote, those numbers could change and uh, get your votes in in order to uh, participate in that. Cool. I think we covered uh, a lot tonight. We did. That was a uh, super fast show. It was a super, super fast show. Super, super fast. Hillary, it's so nice having you here. Uh, and hey, everyone. Um, I'm still here in the chat room. And it's been a slice. Thanks for watching. And, um, yeah, send us your cookies. Attention to Chris. Cookies. <laughs> you ladies and your cookies. They're delicious. D-Man810 is uh, demanding that we actually give away cookies. Hmm. I don't know if we can do. Do that. we mail them out? Do we? Mail what them? do we do? Kind of maybe you'll come for the fifth anniversary party, and 
we'll uh, we'll give you some cookies. That'd be delicious. I think so. Well, hey, thank you so much for being here with us at Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find our website at www.category5.tv. Thanks for all your support uh, over the past several weeks as we uh, raise funds to purchase the new microphones and server. Uh, and you could also, uh, you know, if you haven't already done so and you have the means to do so, uh, please head on over to our website, category5.tv, and click on Support Us. And if you have a website, you can also add uh, our widgets to your website. That's another way that you can uh, thank us for uh, for what we do here is just to, uh, to link to us. We've got our YouTube widget. We've got a banner uh, advertisement that you can add to your site, things like that. And we appreciate everyone who, uh, who does that. Cool. So what have you learned with uh, the web development series? Oh, so much. Um, I'm not really much of a, a web pro, so uh, as a graphic designer, this was, this was huge. Especially with the last part, the SEO, I had I knew it what it was. I just right. had no idea how to actually gather some of your thoughts, and we'll talk about it next week. Okay. <laughs> but we have a Pogo Plug Pro to give away. No way. In the chat room. No way. Oh wait, I lied. We have two Pogo Plug Pros to give away. Oh, that was almost oh, mean. <laughs> that was almost mean. Good luck, everybody. Oh, I see so many wonderful, familiar faces there. Uh, you didn't think I was gonna get you in? On two Poco Plug Pros. You know you'd like to have a Pogo Plug. You can find out more cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. And the winners are Jawar and Jonathan. Congratulations. You are the fine winners of a brand new Pogo Plug Pro. All you have to do is email us live at category5.tv with your mailing address your phone number so that we can ship it to you, as well as the number, I don't know, pick a number. Between what? Uh, 110 billion. Oh, uh, 5,641. Send that number. <laughs> Live at category5.tv along with your address, phone number, and we will send you a pogo plug. Congratulations, Joe R. and Jonathan, and to you. Have a fantastic week, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. See you guys. Thanks for being here, everybody. See ya.